Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have a Thanksgiving coffee bar for you today. But don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I post, and a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Okay, you guys know I have a brand new coffee bar I just built on my last DIY with a $12 thrift flip, and I need to decorate it for Thanksgiving. So um, this is my first DIY for my coffee bar. I got one of these little kind of pop out shadow boxes at Dollar Tree today. I think these are kind of new, but I liked the size and I was gonna kind of try to replace that pop out with my turkey, but it actually ripped the background over on the side. And so that wasn't gonna work. So I tried to pop the back of it out so I could flip it around, but it's really in there, so. I decided to leave it and I'm just gonna work with the back of it. Now I am gonna mix up some chalk paint. Um, this is one tablespoon of water, two and a half teaspoons of calcium carbonate, and a two ounce bottle of acrylic paint. I really like making my own chalk paint. I find it a lot cheaper and I will post a link below. I get that calcium carbonate on Amazon and I'll post a link to the chalk paint recipe as well in case you wanna try it. And I love this turquoise color. It's a color I'm using for Thanksgiving. And I am going to use it, but only on part of the back of the sign. Um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna try to make an ocean scene, like you're looking out at the ocean and you see all the different layers of blue. So after the turquoise, this one I think is the color pool, chalk paint by Waverly. And then I'm gonna kind of blend it in between the different colors of blue with just a little makeup sponge. And then up next, I'm gonna do another chalk paint color. I think this one was called Lagoon. And it's this pretty teal color. And I just kinda of wanna make it look like an ocean scene background because we are gonna be making a turkey today. And you know me, I have to have a little bit of coastal beach influence. I love that. And so you can do your own background, but this is gonna kinda of go perfect for this turkey I'm making today. And for this guy, I just used Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly. And then I'm just kind of blending those all in and make it look like a nice ocean scene where the different layers of blue are going out towards the ocean and blend that all together. And what I'm gonna do is make a turkey for that. But first I'm gonna go ahead and make another chalk paint. I'm gonna probably be using a lot of ivory today. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the water, calcium carbonate and acrylic paint and mix up some ivory chalk paint while I'm at it. And you can see the shells there up on the top there. That is one of those shell um, bikinis from the Dollar Tree. One of my Dollar Trees still has summer stuff. But I love these. I've made them into like seashells for like coastal tear trays. And I thought it was gonna be perfect for my project today. So it's got three holes in it and I'm just filling that in with some spackle just from the, on the back to try to fill that in and make the shell look complete. And this is my plan is to use this giant shell as like my turkey feathers and I'm gonna make a coastal turkey. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this with um, chalk paint. This is the color Hazelnut Chalk Paint by Waverly. And I'm just going in there with a brush and painting that a nice color of brown. My colors for Thanksgiving are like turquoise, whites, and browns is what I've been decorating with. And I think that looks really coastal and I think it looks really good for Thanksgiving. So once I get that all in there, I'm going to use a real seashell for the turkey body and I'm gonna paint that the same color, um, hazelnut, and then I'm gonna do a little fancier shell um, for the turkey's head and I'm also gonna paint that in that color hazelnut as well. And I really like this idea of making a turkey out of shells. It's totally me, right? And so I'm gonna use that ivory chalk paint that we mixed up and I'm gonna distress all over this big giant plastic shell and it's got a great texture on it. And when you use a couple colors like that, it really brings it out and kind of makes the shell look real. So once I get it on there, I want it to draw a couple legs. So I'm just using a brown paint pen and I'm doing some really simple little 
turkey legs, <laughs> just for a little bit of fun there at the bottom of my turkey. And I'm ready to glue it on. I'm just gonna do a thin bead of hot glue all the way around and attach that to my sign. Since it's made out of plastic, it's light, and so I think it'll definitely stay on there with no problem. And then I'm gonna do another shell for the turkey body. I get this all on here, and then I realize that I put that on there upside down, because <laughs> that was supposed to go the other way, and I do fix it. And then I'm gonna do the pointy end of the shell in orange. I'm just using an orange paint pen. I found that it was kind of blending in with the brown. So I do go in and paint it um, with some of that ivory chalk paint as a base coat, and then go back in there with some more orange paint pen so that you can actually see it. But I thought it would be cute for the beak of the turkey to be orange and it would be the little pointy parts of that shell that are sticking out. And this is going to be my little turkey head. <laughs> and I'm just going to hot glue that on right above the other shell. Just like that. And then for um, eyes, what I do is I'm going to go in and just draw two eyes on with um, um, just a Sharpie. And we have an adorable little shell turkey. Now I wanted, um, this was like kind of top heavy. It didn't really want to stand up because all of the stuff was on the back of it, right? And so I'm gonna make a frame. So I'm gonna use this craft wood that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use two of these longer ones. Um, and that should be enough for all four sides of my frame we're gonna make today. So I'm just gonna measure like the inside of both sides and then I'll make the top and bottom a little longer to make it square. I'm not gonna do a miter or anything, but I am using my new miter saw. I really do need to learn how to use it better though. And so once I got the sides cut, I cut the top and bottom, and then I forgot to hit record, but I am just staining this with Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm doing both sides. This craft wood from the Dollar Tree, I find that one side is smooth and one side is really rough. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the really rough side on the inside because I didn't like it quite as well. And then I'm also gonna do the front and any of the sides that you're gonna be able to see. And with Antique Wax by Waverly, you just put it on. You don't even have to let it sit. You can just wipe it right off with a paper towel. Super fast and great for crafting. And that gave me a beautiful stained wood to make a frame. So we're gonna go ahead and put that together. I'm using Gorilla Glue Hot Glue, which works for wood. And I'm just gonna go ahead and attach the sides. Those are the shorter ones. And look how pretty this wood looks stained like that. Um, it looks great for wood from the Dollar Tree. I really love that they're providing raw wood in their craft section now. Um, I think it's a great way to get wood, especially since wood is so expensive. So I got both sides glued on with my hot glue and now I can uh, glue the top on. So the top's gonna go over those little exposed edges like that and go all the way side to side. The top and the bottom are both gonna be like that. And the glue dries pretty fast. You can keep working. You don't need to clamp it or anything like that. And I'm just touching up the sides. Any exposed raw wood, make sure that I get that stained and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach the bottom. Now this makes it where it will stand up and it made it a much more substantial piece um, since I wasn't able to use it the other direction like I wanted, but I like it like this even better. So I'm glad that it worked out that way. And there's our little turkey. I decided to decorate it a little bit um, I got these little teeny tiny starfish. I got these on Amazon. I can post a link below for those. And they're so small, but they're great for just a tiny touch of coastal on projects. And I'm just gonna attach those with a, two tiny drops of hot glue. And he's cute, but then I realized that I put the shell in there upside down. That's not how I wanted it. So I'm using my heat gun to try to break it off. Unfortunately, it did mess up my paint a little bit. The reason I wanted it the other direction is because I wanted the pointy end to be like the turkey neck. 
And I don't know, I just wasn't paying attention. So I'm just trying to repair my damage. I thought I used antique wax on that, but I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't, I used hazelnut. So I'm just gonna go in and um, paint any of the areas that the paint came off with some hazelnut and then I distress it with ivory like I did before. And it's as good as new and we can get the shell on there in the proper direction. It was cute like that, but it's even cuter with it on there the right way. <laughs> So this is the way I really want it. So I'm gonna attach it with hot glue. And crisis averted, we have our little shell turkey for Thanksgiving. And I think he's so fun. Okay, I got this great thankful sign from the Dollar Tree. And it's made out of that like MDF. Um, and I want it to kind of look like stained wood. So I'm using Antique Wax by Waverly. And just kind of working in one direction, trying to give it a wood grain. And the only thing I don't really like about these signs are they re are really kind of hard to paint on um, the outsides and um, around the edges. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do a uh, rough coverage because I'm gonna go back and try to distress um, the front a little bit as well to try to make it look like a wood grain. Um, right now, it kind of looks like stain, just MDF. So I, I work on it a little bit. So once I get that on there, I wipe that off with a paper towel. And then to distress it, I'm using that color hazelnut again and working in one direction to try to give kind of a wood grain. I'm really trying to make it look more like wood. Um, and I am gonna hang this on the wall on the very top of my coffee bar. So my new coffee bar that I installed, I did a thrift flip um, of a $12 dresser and have two shelves above it. So that's gonna go above the shelves. Now this is a great turkey that I found at the thrift store. And I am just going to paint it all over. I got it for $2 at Goodwill. And I'm using that turquoise chalk paint that we mixed and I'm going all over. I'm gonna make him all blue. I think that's gonna look really fun. But you could do this in any color you want. I wanna do blue, cause that's one of the colors I'm using for Thanksgiving. And I think it looks really pretty and coastal. Now I find around Thanksgiving, it's kinda hard to find turkey decorations. And I always like to decorate for Thanksgiving. But whenever you look at the thrift store and the seasonal stuff, a lot of times they have turkeys. So that is a great place to find it. And this is a great size turkey. And there really wasn't anything wrong with it. It just really wasn't my style and I kind of wanted it to be blue. So it's got a lot of texture on there with a lot of feathers and scales. And so it does take a little bit using a brush for sure, trying to get in all those little nooks and crannies with my chalk paint. But I really like it. I thought about making, um, kind of distressing it with some white too. Um, but I decided against it. I left it that beautiful color of turquoise. I used that color of turquoise in some of my other Thanksgiving projects, my thankful tray and my driftwood turkey, some of my previous DIYs that I've made last week. So I am really working to get in all those different grooves because I really don't want any of the brown to show through. I really want the turkey to be all blue. And this is gonna go on my shelf along with our turkey that we made out of shells. And I have two shelves. Um, they're wood floating shelves that we built in that DIY. And I'm gonna get lots of decorations for that. We're gonna do um, all kinds of fun stuff. So this is another thrift sign that I got. It's just a teeny tiny sign. You can use a block, a piece of wood, whatever you've got. And I'm gonna give it just a quick coat of that ivory chalk paint that we mix together and dry that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a window decal, a Thanksgiving window decal from Dollar Tree just to make a very little simple sign to go next to my turkey that was made out of shells. And so once I get it painted, I'm gonna go in there and coat the front of it with just some Mod Podge. And I am going to Mod Podge the window decal to the front of the sign. So this is a great way to make an easy sign, especially if you don't have a Cricut 
or even if you do like me, this is just so easy. So basically just a thin coat and the decal I'm gonna do is the gobble gobble. I thought that would be cute to sit next to one of my turkeys. And then I'm gonna Mod Podge over to seal that decal down to my little ivory sign. And I'm gonna give that a quick dry and then I'm gonna go in, it's a little too perfect looking and distress it a little bit with that ivory chalk paint just to give it a little bit of a coastal vibe. And we have a very quick, easy little Thanksgiving sign. And I've done um, several coffee bar videos before, but I kind of just had a shelf. I didn't really have a true coffee bar, so I'm so excited to decorate this the first time. I got these two great pumpkin and the gourd at the Target dollar spot. And I'm gonna use those up there. I love the blue and white. And then I also got this little um, gnome last year at TJ Maxx. It's a Ray Dunn thankful one, but I didn't really like his little plaid shirt. I didn't really think it went with our theme. And so I am just going to DIY that part of the gnome. You could always use one of the wood gnomes that they have at the Dollar Tree right now with their Christmas stuff. Um, and put that on a base and you would have kind of the same thing. I already had this, so I thought I would incorporate it. So once I get that plaid shirt covered with the ivory paint, I'm gonna go in with that beautiful turquoise um, chalk paint that we mixed and just repaint his shirt. Then it's gonna be the perfect colors, the, the turquoise, the white, and the brown for our coffee bar shelves. And it just says thankful on the front in that Ray Dunn font, which I'm gonna bring that Ray Dunn font in again on some of the other projects today. They kind of tie that in. I love Ray Dunn. So that is pretty much it for him, but I thought one more little touch, one of those little tiny starfish, just to the tip of his little gnome hat, will finish him off. Now I got this little plastic pumpkin at the um, Dollar Tree and I was gonna paint it, but I really love the iridescence and it's the right color scheme. So you know what? I'm just gonna leave it like that. This is something else that I already have. I bought this last year at Etsy. It's beautiful. Look at the craftsmanship on that frame. But you could always make your own with a Cricut. I did not have a Cricut last Thanksgiving and so I bought that. I'll try to post a link below if they're still selling it. And I got these great little pumpkin and gourd from the Target Dollar Spot as well. Now our next DIY is gonna be coffee cups. I got these white plain coffee cups at the Dollar Tree and I got four of them to hang on my coffee bar wall and we are gonna make our own Ray Dunn mugs. It's so easy to do this and so inexpensive with a dollar mug. So I'm just gonna prepare the surface of all of the white mugs with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure there's no oils or anything on the front of our mugs. And then I went in Cricut Design Space and I used the font, The Skinny, which you have to, I think I downloaded from dafont.com and I um, printed that out. I made all of my font, man, I think it was 92 was the size of my font. And I did reduce the spacing between the lines. Now, I used like a strong grip mat. When I peeled it off, I kind of messed up these first two, but your girl was like, uh-uh, no, 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 I don't wanna recut this. <laughs> so I, I made it work, but it was a little bit of a struggle in these first two pieces because <laughs> working with that skinny font on vinyl is kind of hard anyway. And I'm using this beautiful turquoise color. Um, this is actually Cricut vinyl. Um, and it's just what I had and it was the color that I wanted. So that is what we're gonna work with. Now I came up with four different sayings that I thought were very Thanksgiving. For the front of our mugs, we have turkey day, give thanks, pumpkin spice, and gobble gobble. 
Now to apply this vinyl to the front of our coffee cups, I'm using this great paper transfer paper. I love this stuff. I get it on Amazon. It works so much better than the, any, any other kind of transfer paper I've ever used. And I'm just gonna kind of trim them to size. That's just gonna help me line it up on the mug a little bit better and um, kind of know what I'm working with. So once I get that all trimmed on there, we are ready to start applying. So I am gonna go ahead and remove the backing paper there from my Cricut vinyl and kind of line that up on the front of my mug. I wanna make sure that they're all going the same direction with my handles to the left. And we have our first mug done. And this is such an easy way to make your own seasonal Raydun mugs. Um, and you know what? This vinyl actually stays on pretty well. Now, before I had my Cricut, I used to buy um, the skinny Raydun font on Etsy. I could buy like lots of seasonal words like this. People just sell it on there. If you don't have your own Cricut and you wanna make your own Ray Dunn, it's really easy to do and it's really inexpensive to buy the vinyl on Etsy as well. And I am just applying those to my cup, scraping them with my little Cricut scraper and then peeling off my paper. This one was on there a little funny, so I'm trying to um, fix it before it gets good and stuck. And I was able to fix that. Once I cut my vinyl, I'm like, no, I don't wanna do it again. So um, let's not make any mistakes here. <laughs> and here is our last cup. Now I installed a bar above my coffee makers on my coffee bar, and it's gonna be perfect to hang those little mugs. Okay, the last project for our coffee bar, I wanna make a pumpkin pie, like pennant banner. So I have some of this felt I just had laying around. It's kind of yellow, but it's kind of orange and it kind of reminded me of the color of pumpkin pie. So I just drew a line across it and then I'm kind of going back and forth and just trying to use um, as much of the felt as I can to give me some triangles. I want to do five pie sli sliced triangles and to do like five pieces of pumpkin pie. So I might figure out which one's the smallest because of course they're not all the same. And then I use that one as a template to trim all the rest of the pieces of pie so that our pie will be pretty much about the same size. And I am, this is my fifth piece. I didn't really like how that one turned out, but I had a tiny bit of felt left, so I was able to um, make another one here. And then I get five that are all about the same. And we are gonna make some pumpkin pie. Now, the first thing I was like, I need something more. It's not like thick enough or sturdy enough. So I thought I would just use burlap. I got one of these burlap rolls. This is the one from Walmart. And I'm just attaching my pumpkin pie to the burlap with a hot glue. And it's just the perfect height because I wanna have the crust part be the burlap. Um, I thought that would go really well with my coastal theme and it would give me that brown crusty feel. And then I will kind of leave some of the burlap exposed around the edges too because I think that'll give it a fun vibe. So just a tiny bit of the burlap exposed around the sides, but then I'll leave the sewed end on for the crust of our pumpkin pie. So I'm just going in there and cutting those all out with my fabric scissors. Now I want to decorate my um, pumpkin pies with a dollop of whipped cream, of course. Now my first plan was to use pom-poms, white pom-poms, but the only ones I had left over from Easter are huge, they're way too big. So I was thinking, what on earth can I use for whipped cream? Well, then I remembered I had some of this caulk from the Dollar Tree, and I have used that for whipped cream before, so I am just going to swirl a little dollop on each one of my pumpkin pies. And I think that turned out really well. Once I got it on there, I thought they were a little small, 
So before they dry, I try to go back in and smash them a little bigger and add a little bit more caulk to that as well. And they look pretty good. You can kind of swirl them when they're still um, kind of fresh like that um, before they start to dry. Now this is my last project, so I wanted to finish up. So I was kind of trying to speed them up a little bit with my heat gun to make them dry a little faster. Then I am just gonna use some of this jute twine um, to hang them. I'm just going to find the middle and start and attach that. Whenever I do a pettit banner, I like to do an odd number. I think it looks better when you hang it. My shelves are two feet wide, and so I made my twine three feet. And I'm doing these fairly close together so that they will all fit on my two foot floating shelf. And it couldn't be any easier, just a bead of hot glue on the top of my burlap and sitting that on the rope. I'm not really measuring, I'm just kind of guessing. I'm just trying to keep them fairly close together. And that's all there is going to be to this pennant banner. I think it turned out so sweet. And I just kind of used materials that I had on hand. And who doesn't like pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving? Okay guys, are you ready for the big reveal? This is my new coffee bar. If you haven't seen my last video, go back and watch how I put it together. And here is the final reveal of my coastal Thanksgiving coffee bar. I think it turned out really cute and sweet and I just love all of the little coastal details, all the little turkeys. I really like these mugs. These are gonna be great to use for the month of November. I just couldn't quite do Christmas yet because I love Christmas so much, but I don't want it to all be about Christmas yet. It's not about Christmas yet, it's about Thanksgiving. I will start crafting think Christmas soon, don't worry. But this is my thrift flip, my $12 um, credenza that I got at Goodwill that looked nothing like that. And I made it into a built-in coffee bar. So check out that DIY as well. Here's our little Dollar Tree mugs that we made into Ray Dung mugs. Turkey Day, Give Thanks, Pumpkin Spice, and Gobble Gobble. I'm really glad I used that turquoise color. I think that looks really pretty. And here's our little gourd and our seashell turkey. He turned out so sweet and I'm glad I put him on the lower shelf because I really wanted him to be a star of the show. And we have our little gobble gobble sign we made with the uh, window decal and that great iridescent plastic pumpkin back there. And then I had this little Ray Nun thankful gnome and I just gave him a little coastal makeover. And here is our super sweet pumpkin pie pennant banner complete with a little dollop of whipped cream. Up here on the top shelf, we have our dollar spot from Target pumpkin and gourd. We have our thrift flip turkey that I did in this beautiful color of turquoise. It has so much detail, it looks so pretty in the monochromatic shade. And then my pour some gravy on me sign, I love that. I got that on Etsy, but you could always make that yourself with your Cricut. And then on the thankful sign for the very top, and that was also from Dollar Tree. And it goes almost all the way up to my ceiling. I did a shiplap wallpaper on the back wall there to make that look like shiplap. And I'm so excited to decorate my coffee bar for the very first time. What do you think with how it turned out? I really hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, don't forget to hit like, comment your favorite project below, and don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that bell. Bye everyone.